Coming to uni is a super overwhelming transition in life for so many reasons. Physically, you're moving away from home for the first time. Socially, you're in a brand new environment full of different people. And mentally, on top of both of those things, you've got to contend with the workload as well as just taking care of yourself for the first time. So here are five things of varying seriousness that got me through my degree. Also, before we start, a little upgrade to the setup. Look at this RGB lighting. I do not know what colour to pick, lads. Maybe a nice shade of blue. If there's a colour that you prefer to have as my background, then do let me know. Firstly is memes, because life is too short to take seriously, and that also applies to your degree. Of course, this doesn't mean that you should do no work and fuck around all day. Equally, it doesn't really matter if you're feeling off one day, you can't be bothered engaging with uni. And so memes, for me, represent the perfect antidote to the seriousness of life. For those of you in the TikTok generation who are about to start uni or have just started uni, allow me to tell you about a quite niche social media platform you might not have heard of. It's called Facebook and it's quite popular in the long forgotten era of the 2010s. This social media called Facebook had a whole number of meme pages for all your universities. So MemeBridge is the very well known Cambridge meme page. As you can see, the admin is down bad at this point, but the back catalogue of MemeBridge memes represents just a goldmine of emotional support. <laughs> if you've watched my Cambridge reaction video, then this is what we're getting at here with the rowing. You know, it's just, it's a cult. It's a cult, basically. Yeah. Ah, oh, nothing wrong with a bit of self-care. Well, no. <laughs> okay, slight room change. I'm now in London and the interior design does not compare, but I'll try my best. We've got PS4 controller, greatest feed of all time, Choco Leibniz. Basically, these memes have done a lot for me emotionally and clearly Facebook is a bit dead compared to what it used to be for university students. But if you are currently at university and watching this, it's down to you to revive your university's meme page. The last meme we saw there actually leads me on to the next tool for getting through university, and that is the essay extension. On this channel, I'm all about psychology, mental health, self-care. The essay extension is one of the highest forms of self-care in existence, especially at Oxbridge when you get essay after essay every single week. Sometimes it's just impossible to meet all your deadlines. For me, for example, mental health was and is a huge obstacle to me finishing work on time. I would sit on Outlook like 15 minutes before a deadline with no idea what to say to my supervisor and just feeling very anxious. But from the supervisor's perspective, they have so much work to do anyway, their own research, marking other students' essays. It's really not that deep if you have to hand in your essay one or two days late. Obviously, there might be supervisors who are extra finickety about deadlines, but to maximize your chances of success, I think there is a certain art, a certain way to write the extension email that I've crafted over three years. If we look through my Cambridge email inbox and outbox, searching for the term sorry, we can see that over the years I've, I've apologized for many things, but the main thing has been asking for an essay extension. From this vast experience, the ideal format, in my opinion, is that you have to be bold. You have to request the extension right at the top of the email, just so over the rest of the email, they have time to psychologically adapt to it. You start with this request and an apology, then give the reason, and then just to wrap things up, you give a second apology before signing off. Generally, this format and even just basic emails asking for an extension worked fine. Some supervisors were cool with me just bringing in a plan to a supervision or perhaps not bringing anything to a supervision, tutor group, whatever it's called at your university, and just being there for a discussion of the topic. Basically, in normal circumstances, do try to hand in essays on time, but if things go awry, then know that this option is there. Next up, the memory foam pillow. You know what it's like moving into student halls or pretty much any new place. The mattress is made of stone and then the pillow you get is basically just a couple of feathers in a sack. You lie down on it and it compresses to about two millimeters thick. A king or queen like yourself deserves better. I've been using memory foam pillows for 10 years or more and through the ups and downs of life, they are such a versatile tool for sleeping and relaxing, of course, but equally for screaming into, crying. All these different emotions held by one 
therapeutic foamy boy. Just the way it's molding to my hand right now. That's just a form of therapy in itself. Moving back to the academic side, Anki. Anki has pretty much saved me since year 13. There are so many YouTube videos out there about Anki, which you may have watched, but if you haven't come across Anki before, I would describe it as the purest way to revise. The premise is that you make flashcards of what you want to remember, then Anki will review them with you in the optimal order and frequency for creating long-term memories of those flashcards. It's something that obviously applied to the closed book exam era where you had to memorize everything. And who knows, after the pandemic, maybe we're all headed back there. But as long as closed book exams do exist, then so will Anki. Something that struck me about uni was the amount of information you have to take in. On my course, Psychological and Behavioral Sciences, the highlights were two modules called PBS2 and PBS4 where each lecture we'd be given a multiple page handout. And then in the exam, we could be asked about any individual paragraph in any of those handouts. You basically had to try and memorize everything. And that's why Anki is so good. It's not only based on science, based on the forgetting curve, but it's also scalable. It works just as well if you want to remember 10 flashcards compared to if you want to remember a thousand flashcards. As long as you review the cards when the algorithm wants you to, you essentially have no limit on the amount of cards you can memorize. If you memorize 10 a day for a few months, then it really builds up. It's something used mainly by medical students because they have to memorize so many little facts about the body. But equally, Anki is also useful for essay subjects. If you want to break essay plans down into bite-sized chunks, you can convert those into flashcards and then memorize your essay plans. I might make a video about my experience using Anki for essay plans at another time. The final thing that got me through uni was avoiding avoiding these two websites. I'm not talking about inappropriate websites here. Money is tight as a uni student. You paid your tuition fees, your maintenance fees, and now you come to write an essay, pull up the reading list, and it seems you have to pay again for some of the papers and textbooks. What was the tuition fee for exactly? Why are textbooks being sold for nearly £100 each? Sometimes you can get these books at your university library, but what normally happens, someone got there before you. It would be a great shame for the science publishing industry, which totally doesn't exist purely to make money. It would be a great shame for them if there were certain websites, let's say they're called Sci-Hub and Librogenesis, which distribute scientific papers and books for free and make them available for download for the betterment of society. Very illegal as well. All sorts of copyright laws being broke. Yes, yeah, so, so for that reason, it's really helped me to avoid those websites. Definitely avoid them because I can't condone anything illegal. But those were five things that got me through university. And there was actually a sixth one that I wanted to tell you about. I got a comment on one of my previous videos asking if I had a part-time job while at Cambridge, but Cambridge don't actually recommend you get one. So I guess you'll have to subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see how I resolve that conundrum. And until then, all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching this video. But also thank you to every single one of you who has subscribed recently. I told my mates when I started this channel that whenever I hit 500 subscribers, I would do a Q and A. But thanks to all of you who have subscribed recently, I have blazed through that milestone and I'm nearly on, at the time of making this, a thousand subscribers, which is just absolutely obscene to me. So thank you again. It looks like I have an overdue Q and A. If you have a question that you want to ask me about literally anything, I'm gonna leave a pinned comment below this video and a couple of my other videos. So you can just reply to that comment with your question and I will see you next week with another video.